here from this crowd <laughs> on Championship Sunday. But first, we've got the top eight here. Top eight team preview, turn zero. Both of these players trying to pick which four of their six will have the best matchup against what their opponent can bring. This turn zero really sets the stage for how these two teams are going to play well against each other and how these players are going to want to play out the rest of the set. Yeah, it's really interesting here because Trick Room is going to let Arachnid fire off really, really strong attacks. However, there's a Snorlax mm -hmm. uh, on the opposing team. Um, I mean, it's good against Marowak, but Salamence, that's a great counter to Arachnid because you intimidate it, you resist both of its uh, same type attack moves. And Celesteela, um, Arachnid, it's definitely good against that, good against the Marowak. However, I don't know if you really need Trick Room to go up against those, so, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see uh, if Dorian decides to bring that kind of Trick Room mode, or if he just wants to bring his faster mode, rely more on something like Neolega, which has a great matchup against the Marowak, the Salamence, the Tapu Koko. Meanwhile, his own Kartana does very well against Snorlax. And, you know, dealing with Celesteela is pretty easy since you have both Tapu Koko and Arcanine, so mm -hmm. I think maybe the faster mode might work a little bit better, at least in game one, until you kind of see what your opponent is uh, preferring in the way that they're selecting their four Pokemon and what kind of trends you might notice in game one. But I think for game one, just your fast mode might be the safest bet here if you're Dorian. All right, well, it is just about time to get into game here. Both of these competitors have picked their Pokemon and are ready to go. Really tense moments here at the very first stages of the game here. Salamence and Snorlax will be Paul's leads here alongside the Nihiligo and the Arcanine from Dorian. Yep, so the Intimidate is going to go off, or the Intimidate from Salamence is going to go off before Arcanine's Intimidate goes off. So that is some good information, although Arcanine does usually tend to be of the slower variety. Meanwhile, Salamence, usually players train them to be a little bit faster, though it does depend on the Salamence, what kind of set it has. Uh, sometimes we will see the more offensive Salamence with the likes of Dragon Dance and some kind of Z move, whether it be Ground DMZ or Flyinium Z. However, a lot of times you also see the Assault Vest Salamence that is just super, super bulky and just, you know, threatens a lot of damaging moves with the likes of Flamethrower on a Kartana or Bulldoze on a Neo Lego and or Draco Meteor on Garchomp. Kinds of preys on the weaknesses, utilizes Intimidate and Typing a little bit more. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of Salamence this is. All right, Salamence and Snorlax. Salamence will switch out in favor of Celesteela. So Celesteela now out on the field for, uh, for our competitors here. Kartana switching out for Arcanine. Now out, wants to be in front of that Snorlax, while Nihilio actually showing hidden power here, targeting down what used to be Salamence, now catching the Celesteela for neutral oh. damage. Nihilio avoids the high horsepower. Snorlax eating too many berries, a little bit slow on that one. Oh, that was huge, because high horsepower easily would have picked up the knockout there on that Neolego. Uh, but Kartana does come in. Kartana, while being very strong against that high horsepower carrying Snorlax, does really have to watch out for a flamethrower from the Celesteela because if Snorlax simply switches out into maybe the Salamence, uh, that does give some room there uh, to take the resisted hit and then just fire back with a flamethrower on the Kartana. All right, well, both of these players uh, trying to maneuver around to make sure that they are getting the most out of all of their Pokemon here. Really big moments here for Dorian and Paul. Yeah, I mean, the tension's really high in this match right here. Uh, you know, it's early in the game, so you don't want to make any big risky plays. But here we see Arcanine actually come in, provide some intimidate. intimidate support. That's going to be huge. Yeah, getting the Intimidate off onto Snorlax, always a big deal, and also on the Celesteela. But it looks like Paul's just going to withdraw his own Snorlax for Salamence to reset the Intimidate, getting the Intimidate off onto Kartana on Dorian's side. Again, another high value Intimidate onto that Kartana and a little bit onto the Arcanine as well. Kartana just going ahead and protecting itself this turn while Celesteela will be able to set up Leech Seed on that Arcanine. Yeah, rather than maybe going for a Flamethrower in that slot, predicting Kartana to protect decides to get a Leech Seed off into that slot that is now Arcanine. Uh, figured that Neolego most likely going to switch out into Arcanine. That's a, a lot safer thanks to Intimidate and Typing. Uh, so very safe play by both players. Salamence also was able to come in completely for free. They're not worried at all about Kartana. And now, depending on its set, if it's, for example, that really bulky type of Salamence, it likely has Flamethrower for this Kartana Celesteela as well. Also very good against Kartana if it's carrying that Flamethrower. However, you do have to watch out for the Arcanine. 
Uh, but again, depending on Salamence's move set, it could carry a move like Hydro Pump, or if it's you know a much more offensive sweeping style of Salamence with something like a Dragon Dance, it can then threaten a lot of damage to Arcanine. All right, but. Cartana still, if Salamence is not able to pull off any of those style attacks, Cartana may be able to start setting up and going off in this game. Looks like Dorian is just going to retreat Arcanine for the Nihiligo, so bringing the Nihiligo back out on the field here. Of course, showed its fancy moves by dodging the high horsepower earlier. Cartana has the Swords Dance, going to get rid of the Intimidate and boost its attack even further. But Paul also showing that he's put his dancing shoes on Salamence getting the Dragon Dance off, getting an attack boost and a speed boost. Going to be incredibly fast and incredibly dangerous as Celesteela has to just go for heavy slams on Kartana. Yeah, it looks like maybe predicting Kartana to switch out into Neolego instead of the Arcanine switching out, going for the heavy slam in that slot. And either way, even if Kartana does stay in, if it is carrying something like a Focus Sash, then Heavy Slam and Flamethrower both do, you know, they're both going to break the Focus Sash and put Kartana into KO range from another attack. So uh, pretty safe play there going for the heavy slam if you are expecting Kartana to have something like a Focus Sash. Mm -hmm. But now, if Kartana can stick around with that Swords Dance boost, may be pretty scary for the rest of Paul's team. Salamence with that boost is going to threaten that Nihiligo and get it off the field in favor of Arcanine. Dorian just trying to shuffle those Intimidates around to get rid of the boost on the Salamence. Uh, so Dorian really trying to make sure that Salamence can't get too far out of control as it just protects this turn alongside the Kartana's Protect. Yeah, so pretty safe, conservative play there by both players. And we see another Heavy Slam going into the Arcanine rather than the Neolego that was there previously. So great switch by Dorian. Yeah, right now, Celesteela not getting too much value out of its turns here. Uh, I guess expecting the Nihiligo to stick around may have wanted to catch uh, that with the Heavy Slam. Uh, not getting any Leech Seeds off, so Celesteela not as tanky right now and not as uh, much of a wall. Yeah, though, both Pokemon are still at full HP on Paul's side, so uh, he's got to be feeling really comfortable about his position. Salamence uh, doesn't really mind Arcanine or Kartana too much, though. Of course, with Kartana having access to Swords Dance and having mm. already gotten a boost off, it is still very threatening, uh, even though you resist its main moves in Leaf Blade. All right, well, Dorian's actually just going to switch out Kartana for Nihiligo. Dorian just trying to find a way to get Nihiligo in for free and safely threaten that uh, Salamence. Celesteela switches out for Marowak out on the field while Paul goes for another Dragon Dance. That Salamence might start getting scary right about now. Two boosts to speed and now one boost on its attack stat. Dorian just going for a Flare Blitz for the damage onto Marowak, which switched in for Celesteela. Deals a little bit of damage, takes a little bit of damage as well thanks to the recoil. And two boosts now on that Salamence. Going to be really scary if you're that Nihiligo. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what the Salamence goes for here now that it is going to be faster than Nihiligo, especially if that's a Choice Scarf Nihiligo. Uh, Salamence, if it has two boosts, is going to be able to outspeed it. But Nihiligo found, you know, maybe the best possible time to come in because Marowak, it's going to outspeed it, threatens a KO onto it. If it gets an attack off onto Salamence, it can KO that. But we do see it switch out into the Kartana. Yep, just switching back out for Kartana. Dorian making a lot of switches. Paul also making a lot of switches. Both these players being very defensive here, not wanting to throw away their shot with this one. Earthquake not going to deal damage to Celesteela, but will deal damage to the Arcanine and Kartana. That is a boosted Earthquake, so will pick up the KO onto Arcanine. Not going to be able to activate a berry and recover off the health. And Kartana taking not negligible damage there as well considering that it's not doesn't have a good way to recover its health. Yeah, that's huge because Salmon's already picking up the knockout onto Arcanine, Ooh. which was needed for the Celesteela. Uh, Earthquake's going to be enough to knock out Kartana, uh, and Kartana's really not threatening anything at this point. And then, of course, the Neolego in the back will get outsped and knocked out by Salmon's Earthquake. So mm -hmm. uh, really, really good position for Paul here. Salmon's also doesn't really have to worry too much about the Araquanid because it resists uh, a potential liquidation coming out from it. Yeah, Araquanid is the final final Pokemon for Dorian, which is an interesting choice for this matchup. Dorian just going to protect Araquanid this turn, wants to scout out and see what Salamence and Celesteela are going to do, and that may just be the smartest thing Dorian's done, as it is going to be a supersonic Sky Strike coming out from that Salamence. 
Yeah, we'll see which one it targets. Uh, probably the Arachnid and even through Protect. That should still deal massive damage, damage. But perhaps you want to guarantee the knockout onto Kartana. But considering Kartana is really not threatening you, you have to imagine, and it is, it's going to go into the Arachnid. Yeah, Salamence flying high above the wow. field, spots a delicious spider, and through the Protect almost gets the KO. Kartana trying to deal damage back with that Leaf Blade, but even the <laughs> critical hit isn't enough to cut through this two times Dragon Dance uh, Salamence. And even those heavy slams are starting to hurt Kartana now, down in the red, and Dorian just does not have the damage to deal with this Salamence right now. No, at this point, Salamence can just simply Earthquake, although you do have to watch out for Wide Guard, but we already saw Kartana really not threatening damage, so I think mm -hmm. you just Earthquake with Salamence, Heavy Slam the Kartana again. Kartana can't knock out Salamence. We saw just how much a critical hit Leaf Blade does mm -hmm. to Salamence, so a simple Earthquake and then a Heavy Slam into Kartana seems pretty safe. All right, well, Dorian does show Wide Guard on that Araquanid. will protect both the Araquanid and the Kartana from that Earthquake. Uh, but as you said, Kartana uh, not dealing that much damage. The Sacred Sword actually dealing good damage. Another, <laughs> Another crit. critical hit. Kartana is trying its best to bring Dorian back here, but Celesteel is going to go ahead and throw the Kartana into the dustbin as Dorian is going to be forced to bring out that Nihiligo again. Yeah, and, and at this point with both Salamence and Celesteela, it's going to be very difficult for the Araquanid and the Neolego to pull through because even if Araquanid goes for another wide guard that's not protecting either of these Pokemon from the full HP Celesteela, which can mm -hmm. KO either of these uh, Neolego or Araquanid, it's up to Paul which one he decides to target, but his game is all but Paul's because he is in commanding control of this position right here. Yeah, absolutely incredible game coming out from Paul here, getting those two boosts onto Salamence, able to outspeed everything on the field here, showing that supersonic Sky Strike uh, to deal the damage to this Araquanid. Uh, Got to feel good about this game one so far. Salamence actually <laughs> just going for the, the straight up fly. Nihiligo's Power Gym misses the Salamence because of it, and Celesteela's Heavy Slam connects with Nihiligo and picks up the KO there while, while Salamence protecting itself with the fly. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Usually you just see the fly for the supersonic sky strike, but it's so nice to see the fly actually getting used for its intended purpose. Yeah, and it actually, you know, it actually worked. I mean, you avoided the, the you avoided the power gem with it and now you're threatening the KO here. <laughs> It's pretty cool to see Fly used uh, to such success like that. Oh, <laughs> but Fly misses the Araquanid. Uh, the Heavy Slam, unfortunately for Dorian, uh, still going to pick up the KO onto Araquanid, squishes the spider. Paul Ruiz from Ecuador taking game one here of our top eight match. Yeah, he's got to be feeling good about the way he played that. He maneuvered his board position perfectly, got the Pokemon in at the right time, got Salmon set up in a prime position to sweep. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if I am Dorian and I'm looking for adjustments in this second game, uh, Neo Lego just, it didn't seem to really do a whole lot despite being so strong against mm -hmm. a lot of Paul's team. He just managed to play so well around it, always seemed to have either the Celesteela out or the Dragon Danced up Salamence, ready to fire off an Earthquake into it. It's, it just seemed like it was really tough to make that uh, Nihiligo work. Um, I don't know if I want to change it out because it mm -hmm. is just so good against a number of these Pokemon. Maybe just don't let Salamence get set up. It's it's easy saying that, but mm -hmm. I mean, y you got to maybe switch up, bring in Porygon 2. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to threaten Ice Beam into Salamence. Uh, maybe even just go for the Trick Room mode. Yeah, because we did see Salamence is a setup version. It's not, you know, super bulky like those Assault Vest Bulldoze, more supportive style of Salamence. So an Ice Beam should be able to knock it out in one hit. Uh, so perhaps Porygon is a good adjustment to make. We didn't end up seeing uh, the Snorlax, um, you know, put in any kind of work that match or make an appearance. Uh, mm -hmm. Celesteela, uh, I mean, Araquanid doesn't really mind Celesteel, especially under Trick Room. Yeah. It's not really worried about too much. So maybe a combination of Porygon and Araquanid, as well as two faster Pokemon might end up paying dividends should Dorian switch to that kind of mode. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think that was just so well played by Paul. He he really was in control of that match. You know, all the switches he made were on point. Just really well done. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 
when, you, when you're playing a Pokemon like that Dragon Dance Salamence and your opponent has something like a Nihiligo on the other side of the, of the field, it really does all come down to positioning and when you can get those free Dragon Dances to outspeed that Nihiligo to make sure that it's not threatening you uh, even though your, your Pokemon is fairly frail. You know, Salamence deals a lot of damage, but Nihiligo, we saw that hidden power, most likely hidden power ice, uh, really easily threatening a one-hit KO, and then you get those beast boosts rolling, and then Nihiligo all of a sudden is rolling over your team. So with these types of setup teams, you have to really position yourself really well, and I think Paul did a great job of that. Yeah, he really did. And he has a number of Pokemon that he can help support that Salamence. He always had a threat for Neolego out at the same time as Salamence to really, you know, make it so if Neolego decides to attack, if Salamence simply protects, Neolego is facing a threatened knock uh, knockout. We saw Snorlax last time just miss a high horse power. And even mm -hmm. despite that, Neolego still didn't really accomplish anything. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I, I like Neolego, but... These Choice Scarf variants just seem to be a lot riskier. You really have to be on point with what you lock yourself into and when, because they can be knocked out so easily, especially by these Pokemon like an Earthquaking Salamence, mm -hmm. Heavy Slam with Celesteel, a High Horsepower with Snorlax. It's very, very risky bringing that Scarf Neolego, I think, despite it seeming on paper to have such a good matchup against Salamence, Tapu Koko, and Marowak. All right, well, we are headed into game two here of our top eight match. Paul Ruiz of Ecuador took game one, needs one more win to advance to the top four. Standing in his way is Dorian Vallejos from Peru. Tournament life on the line, really needs this win here if he's going to continue on in the tournament into that top four. I know both of these players really, really want. Turn one here, the leads are just going to be the Salamence and Snorlax on the side of Paul Ruiz again, but Dorian will be making those adjustments, going for the Arcanine and Porygon too this time. Double Intimidate's out on the field here, but that Arcanine is getting way more value. Yeah, definitely, against two physical attackers there. We do see Porygon get the physical attack boost, so uh, not gonna power up the potential Ice Beam, but it may not need that because we saw the Salamence is a much more offensive variant. It's not one of those Assault Vest and really bulky Salamences. It may not be able to take an Ice Beam from this Porygon. Of course, it does depend how they're both trained, but Ice Beam does normally knock out Salamence from a Porygon too. You don't really want to go for Trick Room staring down the Snorlax. Uh, so I think just straight up going for an Ice Beam. And then maybe if he double targets the slot with an Ice Beam and a Flare Blitz, that would pay huge dividends. Yeah, that would be a huge moment there. Arcanine actually does go for a Flare Blitz here. Sticking around, targets down the Celesteela. Catches Celesteela on the switch and dealing about 50% of Celesteela's health there. Porygon 2 does go for the Ice Beam as well. Dorian covering both of his bases there, getting a lot of damage onto the Celesteela, but Paul will be able to get this Belly Drum off on Snorlax, cutting its hit points in half, maximizing its attack, and then eating its berry and recovering all the way back up to 100%. Yeah, this is dangerous though. You see Snorlax, Full HP again has the Belly Drum off, so it is threatening a ton of damage. Right now, Celesteela isn't really threatening too much, so I think you just ignore that for now. If you're Dorian, it was nice to get all that damage onto it, but Snorlax revealing that Belly Drum, it's just going to become such a threat. Ugh, it's going to be really tough for Dorian here, how he's going to deal with that Snorlax. All right, Celesteela is just going to switch out for Marowak. So Paul Ruiz bringing out the Marowak, will be able to take an Ice Beam here from the Porygon 2 if it was targeting it, but instead targeting down that Snorlax, just trying to get as much damage off onto that Pokemon as possible, while it is just going to be a Facade coming out from the Snorlax to pick up the KO onto Arcanine. And we saw it moving before Arcanine there, so I wonder if that Arcanine went for something like a Roar, trying to mm -hmm. get Snorlax out of there, remove that Belly Drum boost. Unfortunately, though, for Dorian, Paul saw right through that, targeted the right slot there, going for a Facade, knocking out the Arcanine, keeping a Snorlax around. It's going to be so tough to deal with this Snorlax, but if there's one Pokemon who maybe has the potential to knock it out in one hit, it's something like that Araquanid. Yeah, Araquanid has so much offensive pressure uh, with that Watarium Z. Uh, with that Hydro Vortex, it just deals so much damage. Going to protect itself this turn, though. Doesn't want to go on the offensive. Marowak trying to Will-O-Wisp. will o -Wisp is oh. owned. Snorlax boosting the facade. And, uh, I was going to say, now it can't be frozen <laughs> either. Instead, the Ice Beam is going to target down the Marowak, dealing a little bit of damage, but the full power facade KOs Porygon, too. That's the power of Belly Drum plus facade that 
when your Pokemon has been status. So Paul Ruiz, Snorlax is angry this turn after this time around after missing that high horsepower in game one. Oh, that was that was oh, a no. great play. And Tapu Koko forced to come out against an Alolan Marowak. Yeah, already down to Dorian's last two Pokemon. Now, Araquanid is very good against his Marowak and Snorlax, but Tapu Koko, you know, useless against Marowak. And Araquanid, you really need to focus down this, you know, Snorlax mm -hmm. at maximum attack and burn powering up Facade. You've got to focus that down, but if you leave it alone, Marowak just is going to knock you out, and you can't deal with the Marowak with your Tapu Koko, so this is so tough. All right, well, both... Marowak and Tapu Koko are protecting this time around. Snorlax goes for the facade, will connect with the Araquanid. So much damage. Nothing can stand in the way of this Snorlax. It has taken all of the KOs so far this game, and it is looking for a clean 4-0 of just the Snorlax. Yeah, and I think it's going to get it because this Marowak supporting Snorlax, Tapu Koko not going to be able to take out the Snorlax thanks mm -hmm. to Lightning Rod. Looks like Paul is going to be the one to advance to the top four. Just has to use the Dazzling Gleam, not even bringing Snorlax down to 50% hit points, even with that Life Orb. Marowak going for the Shadow Bone, trying to steal this KO from Snorlax, is going to get <laughs> it with a critical hit. Marowak wants to join the fun, and Paul Ruiz is advancing to the top four.